Hey peeps, welcome back to Project Anonymous, and in today's video, we'll get you set up on your Inkscape layout to make things a little easier. So stick around and see how we do it. So you just downloaded Inkscape, what now? We're gonna talk about customizing the Inkscape layout. And we do, we do a few things in our Inkscape layout to customize the look and feel of Inkscape in order to fit our needs for our embroidery projects. One thing that we do in our Inkscape is customize a template that we use. Um, again, for our embroidery projects, we use our 4x4 hoop template and our 5x7 hoop template quite a bit. So rather than having to set up our document properties every single time we go into Inkscape, we can do it once mm -hmm. and then just call back on those settings each time we go in there. So the next thing that we'll go over is shortcuts. We've covered this in a different video, but we'll go over again if you haven't watched it. The next thing we'll talk about is how we open up our useful tabs that we use when we do our embroidery projects, such as fill and stroke and text and font and objects and layers. So finally, we'll go over grids and guides, which are both good reference and layout tools. So should we get on with it already? Let's go. So the first time you open up Inkscape, it will pop up uh, some, a window looking like this, where you can decide, do you want this in dark mode or, or light mode? What kind of keyboard you're using? What kind of overall appearance would you like? Uh, since Inkscape came out with the dark mode, I'm really digging it. I really like the dark mode a lot. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep that there. But you can see uh, some of the options that you have, the default, which was the old um, light mode, if you will. Uh, but I like this uh, dark mode here. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I like that. And we'll go ahead and save. And we're going to go ahead and click on new document. So here you can kind of see the, the default page in dark mode, at least. So if we were going to set this up for a four by four hoop embroidery project, uh, a four by four hoop is, again, it's hard to tell because you're you're measuring device here is in pixels, or I believe it's in pixels, front, or millimeters rather, by default. And, you know, living in America, we don't use millimeters a whole lot. So we're gonna go ahead and make some of these changes. And you can see here, it's set up automatically for an A4 page. So we can kind of guesstimate right now that, you know, we can do a little design right here in the corner and say it's four by four, but there's a better way to do it. So we're just gonna go into our document properties. And right here, you can kind of see some things that we can change. So first of all, we like our inches so that we can easily reference uh, in our, you know, our four by four hoop would fit right there, right? So we also like doing the checkerboard background. We do. So there's, again, we also want to change the size of this page because that's going to show the embroider, embroiderable area of our 4x4 hoop. So uh, we're going to go ahead and change this to inches as well so that we can change this to 4x4. Four four. And you can see now this is changed to a 4 inch by 4 inch square. And that's what we want. We also like to see a checkerboard pattern. Um, now, again, with it being in dark mode now, it's not necessarily as important to put on checkerboard pattern because you're not gonna see a white circle or a white shape uh, or object hidden on the old white background. But you might see um, a darker color hidden. On the yeah, background. so exactly. If you picked a gray and drew a gray circle here, it might get hard to see. Obviously, I picked the wrong color and there's a stroke on it, but. You can see if I got rid of the stroke on this one, hit shift, move that. You can easily lose uh, shape in this color. Yeah, right? I wouldn't be able so to. So, right see there, that. you can see it just disappeared. So, if we turn on the checkerboard pattern, now you can see, oh, there it is. And That's a pretty that. helpful. So, mm -hmm. it's helpful. I like putting checkerboard on, um, but if you're not planning on using this particular shade of gray, then you're okay. Um, you can also change the border color of your four x four square. So if you want it, I don't know, to be a little bit more red, um, or pink, or pink, if you will, um, you can also choose how you select that color. So now you can see where your four x four square is a little bit easier. 
Um, but again, this is what we do when we set up our template. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, close this. And now we're gonna set up the page how we like, nice and zoomed in on it like that. And we're gonna save this template. We go to file, save, this te save template. And because we've done this in the past, you can see it's asking us to replace it. We'll go ahead and click replace because I like that nice red line there. And there you go. And the next time we open up Inkscape, you can see we're gonna close this. You can see that none of our, uh, we're still not set up as a four by four. We're still in millimeters because it defaults to that when opening. But you can click on new from template and click on your a uh, newly created template. And then we'll open up a new file where you now have that. And you can see it's set up perfectly for you. So the next thing we'll go over is keyboard shortcuts. So right here, you'll see the little Inkscape here, and then you'll go to preferences. And then you see interface. And if this arrow isn't brought down, you can just toggle it down. And then you'll go to keyboard and then you can search for what you want. So we're gonna make a shortcut for our params. And then it will be under extensions. And then you'll see here, and then you're going to click it under shortcut and it will say this. And then you're gonna type in what you want. So we're gonna do shift control P. And then it'll go here. So now if we just bring down a little shape here and thanks for a little colored background, we can see it. We'll do shift control P and then we'll bring up our params. Cool, easy. And you can do this for any command that you'd like. So if you have the same screen we do right now where there's no tabs on the side and no text and font tool, we're gonna show you how to bring those things up. Right, and once you do it and in one design, it should, remain there. Like if you close Inkscape and then reopen it, those tabs should come back. Uh, so uh, you really should only have to do this one time, but we'll show you some uh, a nuance of this new Inkscape 1.1.2 uh, that we didn't have to deal with before because the, the tabs that would open would normally stack vertically here. Now they stack horizontally on here and I'll show you what I mean. So we'll do some that we like. So fill and stroke, we normally have open. Layers. Um, what else do we have? Text and font. So you can see here we have it now stacked horizontally next to each other, where it used to kind of stack this way. But there they are. Now, one thing we'll point out, if we opened up another one, our objects tab, you'll see that our objects are only visible now and they other ones turn into icons. So they're still there. They just turn into icons to make space uh, for the, uh, the four different tabs that we had open. Another thing we can do, if we didn't need all of this workspace, we can just drag this bar over. And once we get to a certain point, it will then turn back into the words. Uh, but if you're running short of space, you can just shrink it down and you can see they're still there. They're just little icons. Okay, so the next thing we'll go over is grids. So these can be helpful if you want like a pattern or something on a certain design. So you're gonna wanna go to File, Document Properties, and then under Document Properties, you'll see these options. You're just gonna go to Grids. So then you're gonna wanna press New. And you can't really tell where the grids are, so all you have to yeah, do- Yeah, with the new dark background, yeah. it's really hard with the default color. So you can change the color of the mm -hmm. grid though, right Meg? So all you have to do is go to here and there's a major grid line and minor grid line. So I'm gonna go here and then I'm just going to change the color to something a little bit easier to see. I'll do a nice yellow. So now you can actually see it. And then something else you can change is the spacing. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be squares. You can make it whatever shape grid, but it will be um, perpendicular, 90 degree line. So straight up and down and side to side, no matter what you do. But you can adjust um, based off of whatever measurement you like and uh, 
however far away from each other you want for your particular design. You can also um, align it to the page. So if you notice it's not like where you want it, you can just hit these arrows and then you'll notice it goes where you want it to. So you can get it right there. So that's pretty nice. And then you can also make it dots. So well, um, another grid type you can do is the axonometric grid. And you're just gonna do new again. And what you can do with this one is you want to change the color first because I can't really see it. And that's a good color. The first thing that you can play around with is where it lines up, like the rectangular grid, you can do that as well. You can also change the angle of the grid. So if you want it to be 70, you can do 70. And then you can also change this angle here too. And that's just a fun way to play around it and customize the pattern. You can also play around this, the spacing between them. So if you want it a little bit bigger, you can do that. This is just a cool way to lay down a visual pattern if you needed like to do that in yeah. making like a quilt or whatever to, to lock down some batting underneath your material. And it just will snap there. Yeah, that's the great thing about it is your with your snapping tool on, you can just draw bezier lines that will snap to those lines. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. Yep. You can also change the grid unit of it. So if you want it to be inches, you can. Of course. So the last thing that we're going to talk about in this video is guides. So it's also under document properties. If you just go here and then what you can do is create guides around the pages. And then you'll get these, um, and then right now I'm just going to change the color and go white. And you can do this as many times as you need or, or as many grid lines as you need, but to move these to where you want it, you just kind of get it to where there's a little hand there, double click. Now you can label it and call it, you know, start of text as an example. Um, make it a specific color and then put it exactly where you need it. So let's say we needed, you know, a line right here on the one inch uh, point. So we would just click that one inch and that's going to be 90 degrees. You can change it to any degree that you want. And we'll hit OK. And now you can see it labeled it start of text and put it exactly on the one inch line. So that you have a, a reference, a snappable mm -hmm. reference so that when you put in text, I'll go ahead and add some text here. And then, um, so pretty important here because this is still text, mm -hmm. this will not snap to your grid line. It's because it's still kind of like a quasi mm -hmm. object. It's not, it's, text. It's editable text. So in order to give it um, node points, you have to convert it to a, a path. So click on object to path. Now it has, it's made up of node points. You can see that it highlights red there. But now what we can do is we can drag this. And once we get close to this grid line, you can see it snaps mm -hmm. right there. Again, that's because we had the node snapping tool on, which is this guy right here. With that off, it's still, we can move it around and get it anywhere close um, without it snapping to. But with that on, it snaps right in place, right where we want it. Mm -hmm. So kind of a neat feature. Again, if you have a specific layout for a design um, that you need uh, put in here, uh, you can create, again, as many lines as you need for as many lines of text uh, because Inkscape alone with writing text in, um, it could, you know, you could just be like eyeballing it. Well, you don't have to eyeball it with the grid lines. So that's kind of nice. Mm -hmm. You can get it very specific from where you want it. Exactly. So that's where it's helpful. So I really hope you found this video helpful and maybe you learned a few new things. 
Yeah, we've covered a lot of this in previous videos uh, sporadically through our series, but we wanted to put a video together where all of these setup type items were all in just one video so that, you know, if you were opening up Inkscape for the first time, you can get yourself set up. Yeah. Um, at least the way that we set ourselves up. Again, not saying our way is the best way, but it sure has worked out for us so far. I didn't get that. Could you try again? <laughs> so if you have any video suggestions or anything you want us to cover in our Inkscape and Inkstitch tutorial, make sure to leave them down below. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like if you liked it. Like it. Subscribe if you enjoy our content. Subscribe. And turn on those notifications so you get my every single time we post a video. Stay crafty. And be happy. Bye.